Hi, Fabrizio. How are you doing? Hi, Jason. I'm doing fine. And you? Good, good. Very good. Thank you yeah. for asking me to do this. Really yeah, appreciate well, it. Yeah, it's, it's a big pleasure for us to have you as, as our, our instructor at uh, Street and Repeat. I'm just dwelling here with my uh, headset. Just a second. <laughs> okay. In a moment. There you are. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, thank you very much. Uh, we uh, really are thrilled to have you as you know, our, our instructor at Street and Repeat. And uh, uh, actually, this is the first time we are doing an interview uh, on video, on Skype, uh, but uh, normally we have been doing them by written. So I hope this goes well and that uh, people will enjoy it. So, uh, but they will react, I know, after, I, I'm sure. I feel, like, uh, I feel like a lab rat, an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We will do just fine, sir. Anyway, well, so um, as I told you already, I like to discuss uh, photographs in my interviews with uh, sure. instructors, uh, uh, and that's what I would like to do uh, here. So I have a uh, list of twelve pictures that uh, I would like to talk a bit. Uh, so and the first picture I would like to talk about is uh, this. Uh, that looks like to me like this epic epic after a uh, screw up uh, <laughs> scene where where i mean there's no they, they're beyond the point of no return to me i mean do you have a different reading of this image or uh, what's up what what happened here because it looks so amazing like that they, they yeah <laughs> tell me this this um yeah this is um this was one of the first uh, pictures i took really when i was started out doing street photography seriously and um, I used to travel out of Marylebone station quite often and so I'd hang around outside the station with my camera and I saw this couple there and I'm wary about saying too much about this because actually I was watching these two for about 15-20 minutes um, and they were in a really bad way I don't know whether they had a bad night the night before or had too much to drink but they were in a real mess um, and they were talking and eventually the woman just sat down and the guy just leant as he did there against the railings and I had my camera with me and I took a snap. The thing is that when you look at this picture you think some people have thought well they spilled their coffee and they're really upset about that. I think the coffee was already there from my <laughs> recollection. Okay. Um, and <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was just, I was sort of watching them, I had my camera with me, and I didn't want to take a snapshot of them when they were um, discussing things, but then they sort of hit this formation of despair, and I thought, I can't resist it. Um, but I don't think this was, um, I don't think this was a happy moment for them whatsoever. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's clearly visible, I mean. Um, something I really like about this picture is the way the, 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 the subjects they they almost touch uh, each yeah. other but there is this thin thin line of, of negative space between them which gives yes. this sense of proximity you know but then uh, they seem so far apart that uh, that i mean I, I really really like the picture because of that so but uh, yeah no no i hear you it's it's i mean they were a couple but i got a real sense watching them that that was a that may not have been a long standing or may not have existed for much longer given their body language and what was going on but yeah th th this was um this was a difficult one and 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 this proximity um their body language says everything but doesn't it really yeah, um, even exactly. though they're close to one another so it's it's a poignant moment actually and and one that people have misinterpreted and found humorous and comical but um actually it wasn't and i've always felt a little bit bad about this photograph i think that if you could have seen their faces i may have taken this off flicker a long time ago not sure <laughs> not sure about that okay Hey, um, let's move to the next picture. Uh, okay. This is a sort of museum exhibition by Martin Parr. Yeah. Um, I'm sure because there is his, his picture there. And uh, yeah, we can clearly see what you're doing there because you know, yeah. we have this... all been there using prior art to, to make our pictures uh, and stuff. Um, 
what's what's your your take on that? No, it's really it's really difficult. It's like uh, OPA or other people's art involved in pictures can either work or fail. I don't think there's there's a halfway mark on it. I think either it's extremely successful or it it, it is a fail. Um, if done extremely well, it's amazing. Um, and some images come to mind. The, the one that springs to mind um, immediately is Nick Turpin's shot of a couple of women who are looking at a picture of a, a, a British comedian called Ken Dodd. <laughs> and they're hold, he's holding up in the picture his fingers as if towards the edge of the canvas. <laughs> and the women are also gesturing in a similar way at him. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, it I looks like <laughs> the, the painting and the women are communicating. That's one that springs to mind as working incredibly well. Um, I think that used as a backdrop, um, unless it is spectacularly um, impressively done, I think that using other people's art is, um, uh, is, is, is not necessarily to be encouraged too much. Um, this is an example the picture you're talking about here with me yeah. um, of that and I think the art here is is, is incidental to be honest with you um, it just so happened to be in a gallery that I took this shot I think it was a science museum um, at the time where they, they curiously do have some wonderful exhibitions from time to time photographic ones sure. um, and I was looking at the picture and I was aware out of the corner of my eye of this little girl who, start, who I could see was going to be beetling uh, in front of me yeah, and what yeah. I was actually trying to do was just to catch her dead center, middle of the, the par image, in between those two little uh, bollards, yeah. if you like. Yeah, and yeah. what then happened, completely by chance, is her father scampered up behind her and reached into the frame and yeah. entered my frame and grabbed her hat <laughs> as she was walking. So this is one of those situations where if I had taken the picture I intended, Tended to take it wouldn't have been anywhere near as good as, as this one. Um, mm -hmm. I'm quite fond of this one for obvious reasons. It's one of my early shots as well. Um, okay. But it's one of these situations of, of, of the street god smiling. Something happened that was completely <laughs> unplanned. I hadn't foreseen it, and it just so happens I pressed the shutter at the time that he came in. Um, the fact that one of my favorite photographers' pictures is in the background is is <laughs> is, is pure luck, really. I think yeah. it would have been great if there was a picture of somebody reaching down from the top right of the frame towards her as well. If that was a picture of that sort of thing happening, then I think um, that would have been even better. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's one yeah. of these things in the gallery, you know, you yeah, always yeah. have a camera with you. Yeah, so. that, that, that was my next question. Uh, how did it happen? Because uh, it looks like uh, incidental, like it just came from nowhere. And totally. that's, that's the case. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> totally. I mean, uh, you know, most, most, I think I think a lot of street photography is five parts skill and five parts luck. You know, mm. I really do think that a luck. Oh, uh, maybe no, maybe that's unfair. I think four parts skill, five parts luck, one percent observation. But I might be wrong on that as well. That's just me, though. <laughs> okay, so moving on to number okay. three. Uh... So this okay. is a, a brain twister, this picture. Uh, the first time I looked at it, I was looking at the guy on the left, and then I oh, see yeah. the guy on the right, and I expect him to be facing uh, the other one, and he's not. He's just with his back. And it took me a few moments to realize <laughs> what what's going on here. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was so weird because if you... I was walking through, it was in Smithfield's Market in London, and I was just uh -huh. walking past this scene, and as I hit that exact spot, the the way that the window reflected and the bollard, the pillar, blocked the second character, yeah, yeah, yeah. it just created this illusion, this bizarre, almost negative, yes, yes, exactly. in, the, in the window. Yes, um, yes. And again, one of these things that, you know, I just managed to see it at the right time, and, you know, you can see me kind of slightly in the window, reflection reflection of myself bending slightly oh, yes. to my I left. Oh yes, you there on the left side, the, on the because back of the guy on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So <laughs> I mean, I had just stopped, but realized, oh my God, I, I, if I had taken it, if I was standing upright and had taken it, you would have seen a tiny bit of the second man on the right. <laughs> so I had to literally just list yeah. slightly over just to make sure that I cut him off completely. <laughs> so um, again. A little bit yeah. of observation and a lot of luck, just that these two were standing in exactly the right place. Actually, um, now, yeah. now that you're saying it, I think you can see the guy again reflected between the pillars. 
just in yeah. the window. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, but uh, really, it's it's a brain twister. The first time I looked at it, I was for a few moments, a good few moments, looking at it like uh, I was uh, expecting to see a gray, light gray guy facing uh, the other one, you know. And instead, uh, yeah, okay. It was uh, very weird. Yeah, yeah. So number four. Number four. <clears throat> so um, this is the. Uh, just a second, yeah, just a position to rule them all. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, f I forgot which one this was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the pink stripes and then the, the, the black and white dots. Uh, I mean, it's, it's really, really amazing. Uh, I really, really enjoy this. And uh, is this something, some kind of thing that you do and you don't show normally? Because it's not something that you normally um, show, at least. You know? No, I, the short answer is I don't look. I don't look for this sort of thing anymore. Um, when I started out, and this was when was this taken? Two thousand and twelve. You know, um, I think perhaps I'm wrong again. But when we, I think when a lot of people start out in street photography, they look for juxtapositions of one sort or another, and I think that's a healthy thing to look for color coincidences, shapes, what have you. Um, this was a couple of years into my education if you like at street photography and I was still looking for juxtapositions of one sort or another um, and I noticed first of all here the the pink the edge of her skirt and the pink lines and as I walked closer um, and I was using and still do use the 50 millimeter lens so I wasn't actually as close to her as this but I was getting closer and closer I then noticed the, the tights matching up with the uh, street light yeah and um, then I took the shot because I was afraid she was going to move away it was only when I had it processed that I noticed the dots on the shoes matching the indentations in the in the pavement yeah um, but uh, the short answer is I, I don't look for this so much anymore now um, my photography's changed an awful lot since then in terms of what I'm looking for but that's not to say if I don't see something um, that is a wonderful coincidence I won't take a photograph of it. That's okay. that's not what I'm saying. And coincidences are beautiful things to see from time to time. They are just so fulfilling yeah. when you get something just so right. Um, and fate throws you something so beautiful. It's insane not to take an image of it. I took one recently of a guy with striped hair and striped T-shirt. Okay. Um, and there were striped. <laughs> there were again parking lines next to it. So um, yeah, I still see it from time to time, and I'll still take a shot of it. But I don't actively look for it anymore. So no, not so much. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought so because uh, from your style, your current style, at least, uh, it's it's not exactly the thing that you have been uh, showing at least uh, I was just wondering if uh, you had a secret street photographer's life you know <laughs> like, okay so number <laughs> five yeah well <laughs> number five um, waiting for it to load uh, yeah these two oh, guys yeah. laying okay. on, the, on the ground I mean are they twins because they are dressing alike yes. uh, and, and the scenes no, I'll, I'll, so I'll demystify this I'll, this is one of these this is one of these shots where um, the truth um, is far less interesting than than the image. Um, these this was taken outside Hamleys, and this was actually a man and a woman who were promoting some boy in Hamleys, so they were dressed like farmers. Ah, okay. Um, I was actually it was Fadi Bukarem had come to visit London that day, so I ah. travelled down to London to meet up with him, and I think this was early-ish in the day on Regent Street, so it wasn't that busy. So these guys. Um, decided that they were just going to goof around and lie down in Hamley's door entranceway. <laughs> well, it's, it's that simple. They, they were dressed like farmers to yeah, promote yeah, yeah. Uh, a farm animal toy or something like that, and they lay down. I just sort of stepped back slightly um, and just took the shot. Um, so I think, in a way, it's, it's kind of misleading because it's what you don't know that is far less interesting than the image itself, you know? Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it surely it surely looks uh, surreal. I mean, uh, it, I would imagine some kind of demonstration with people <laughs> from the, the. I mean, I, I live in Brussels and uh, I work uh, in the European uh, district where all the institutions are based. Uh, I work yeah. for one myself, and every now and then, 
they descend upon us. I mean, yeah. uh, like two years ago, there was a farmer's uh, uh, demonstration where they literally flooded the city with tractors, farm tractors. I mean, there was one of the major uh, roads, that's five lanes going outside of town into a tunnel uh, that then leads to, to outside of Brussels. Yeah. These five lanes were packed with parked tractors. There was not one inch to pass cars. I mean, it was like one kilometer of parked tractors on that lane, and they stayed there for like two days, one and a half day. So they arrived on one morning, they left the next day by midday. And it was impressive, really, really, really impressive. At the time, I couldn't do much with photography for it because I was in a rush and uh, my car was blocked. I had no idea that was going to be like that. And mm. so uh, having this background, I imagine these two guys being part of a demonstration of, of, of farmers in the city. You know, you will start making up these stories. And uh, then <laughs> well, this, is, this is the joy of it, isn't it? The, yeah, the actually, exactly, exactly. It's much less interesting than that. And I, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm really sorry if you thought it was more interesting <laughs> than the story I just told you. This is what I always worry about, telling people about the reality yeah, of the yeah, pictures. I, I um, but, you know, <laughs> but sorry, I, it's, it's, sorry nice, it's nice to know. It's nice to know. I mean, uh, I know that was probably not the reality. So uh, yeah. I, I'm curious and I will still imagine my uh, demonstration good. for sure. Good, so good. don't worry. Good. Anyway. So, uh, next picture, number six. Number, number six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me see. I uh, can't uh, remember it anymore. Oh, yeah. I, I, I remember my daughter laughing uh, when we <laughs> went to Iserlohn in Germany you know, at the two year celebration of Observe. Yeah. And she looked at the wall. I mean, you cannot imagine. You were not there with us at that moment. Uh, she starts laughing and uh you know like i i knew the picture already from uh, from your your stream uh online but she didn't so when she got there she looked at the head of the the guy and at the chimneys and the, you know the whole scene and she starts yeah. laughing and laughing laughing it, it's really really a beautiful scene uh oh, good. I'll, tell you what I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what i'll do i'll send a print of this one <laughs> along with the other package i'm going to send you if you can Thank hang you on for another much. week I'll Thank get this you. printed up and send that for your daughter. Yes, that would be fantastic. Okay. That would be uh, that would be amazing. That, no problem. Uh, she will be wow <laughs> through the roof. Good, good, good. Okay, so um, uh, oh well, that takes us to the next picture. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean I followed that guy around for about ten minutes. Um, okay. And okay. Uh, eventually, I saw the chimneys and thought that was it. Yeah. 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 Next one, number seven. Yes, number seven. This is the uh -huh. Martha, Martha, yes. troublemaker Martha. Martha. What, what? I, I mean, about this picture. Um, the, the, I mean, I, I, I can't picture any other country uh, other than the UK where these kind of things happen. I mean, at least maybe maybe I'm not aware of other cultures that do this kind of a competition. This is a competition, isn't it? Well, it's it. It's not actually. This is a guy who travels around uh, and and performs with his sheep at county shows. Ah, okay. I, I I go to county shows a lot in summer out here, as you as you know. Um, ah, I go yeah, to yeah. I've seen event, that, yeah. And he's at every single one with Martha and all his friendly sheep. So, um, I don't know. Is this uniquely English? I, I I like to think it is because if it if it isn't unique to this country, then I'm kind of wasting my time on this. But um, <laughs> it's certainly not unique to me. Um, but I still love this guy because th this is terrific. And uh, I say I go to a lot of county shows. He's always there. But now I don't bother taking any shots of this anymore because I've got this one and I'm happy with that. So I'm going to stick with this one. Um, I, I, you know, I'd like to get some feedback from people on this. Is, I'm sure there are county shows, there are agricultural shows in the U.S., for example. There must be some in other countries, but people seem to think that this is a very British or English um, event. I don't know whether it's to do with the people in their floppy hats and their, their lawn chairs that maybe make <laughs> it more English. Um, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But uh, in any case, it's a, it's a wonderful scene. I mean, uh, and Thank the, you, yeah. the, 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 the ship, uh, Martha missing, and then three, three others packed on the next two uh, slots. 
it makes you think, what is Martha doing? There she goes again, uh, troublemaker, well, troublemaker. <laughs> from what I gather, Mar Martha is, has always caused problems at these county shows. <laughs> guy and you know maybe he needs to replace Martha and make it Bertha or something yeah. I don't know yeah 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 something. <laughs> okay number eight um this is a picture number eight from the start oh, it's up. raised me a lot of questions I mean when I look at this it's such a simple composition I mean content wise it's sky flag back yeah. of the man and yet it caused such an impact on me when I when I saw it first. If you go to the comments of the picture on Flickr, uh, you'll see what I the people will see what I mean uh, because yeah. I was really really asking questions. I mean, what is he looking at? Where is he? Why is he so uh, formally dressed? Uh, you know, and you know with the the the, the cocoa hat and the, uh, yep, the, the jacket hat. and I mean. Give me, give me just the 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 whole truth you're, you're, about this you're thing. Ruining, you're ruining my pictures here. I'm thinking, I'm giving away all all the truth <laughs> about the pictures. That is so boring. The the, the truth you know. is really boring. It's it's another county show I went to. Oh God! And because they're so yeah, they're so traditional that um, the stewards there, the officials, all wear bowler hats and uh -huh. they all wear suits. Um, lots of my other pictures on my stream and maybe on my website. You'll see other similar characters I've taken shots of, but uh -huh. this guy, he was standing at a at a, a small fence which surrounded the horse riding enclosure, oh, okay. and he was one of the officials there. Uh -huh. um, and just at the entrance, as always in these shows, there's a flagpole with the Union Jack on top of it. Okay. So okay. I I saw this and I took a few shots of it straight on from my height, about five ten, five eleven. And there was a lot of clutter going on. There was a lot of stuff in the background. He was lost. I couldn't quite get the flagpole, you know, correctly. So I just sat down um, about 15 feet away from him, maybe a little bit more, and just angled it slightly up and just cut him at the shoulders. And there it was. And um, it's nice and clean. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And I like, you know, this... As you say, it's it's quint. This is very obviously quintessentially British. The bowler hat, the Union Jack, yeah. um, and I. Until now, I like the idea that people thought that this was something slightly, you know, symbolic. That there was some wonderful, you know, the pride of Britain. This was taken in the city or something like that with a businessman. It's not. It's he's an official at a at a county show who just had to be happened to be wearing a bowler hat. Yeah, so yeah. there goes and there, you know, there's the demystification of another of my images. <laughs> oh god, oh god, I'm I'm killing your portfolio. <laughs> you know, I was I, I'll tell you what I one of the the sceneries where I imagined this. You yeah, know? Uh, I imagined this guy over the cliffs of the uh, of 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 uh, Dover, looking <laughs> looking at Calais in France, you know, and and uh, wondering, uh, shall I vote for Brexit or not, you know? <laughs> this was the recent thoughts, of course, because I saw this picture much before Brexit sure. vote came up last June. Uh, and, uh, yeah, right now I would say he probably was voting for it, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Look, looking over the uh, the enemy, the French, across La Manche. Yeah, and exactly, deciding, uh, exactly, exactly. None of them, please. Yeah, yeah. No, sadly not, sadly yeah, not, Fabrizio. Yeah, yeah. Just a <laughs> show. Uh, anyway, so number nine. Let's okay. Go picture number nine. This Let is, me hang on. Uh, hang on, hang oh, on. Yes, the Abruzzo, Abruzzo picture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. The, with the trailer and uh, it looks very yeah. surreal. It looks very, this very is, surreal. Um, this was quite a weird, weird situation actually. Um, as long as you've got the time, I've got the time to tell it. I'll try and keep it quick. My um, Karen, my partner, and I, we were on holiday in Abruzzo. Uh, this was what three, uh, two, two years ago, two and a bit years ago, and we were looking for a restaurant on the coast, and we didn't have very good direction, so we kept sort of driving down these little coastal roads, just trying to find it. So we came to a stop at this road, and I always had my camera with me around my neck, and there was this sort of these metal fences, solid metal fences. You couldn't okay. see through them. Okay. Okay. So me being me, I decided that I was going to look, go into this area to see what was there. <laughs> and I opened the door, the, or the, the the gate, if you like it. But although it was um, solid, and there in front of me was this area of the just on the cliff mm -hmm. with three caravans. Okay. Uh, this one you see ahead of you, and a couple more off to the right. Really simple. I mean, this you don't get more simple than this as a caravan. Now, 
As I walked through the gate, this guy had obviously just come out of this caravan and was heading off towards the shower, as you see on uh -huh. the left hand of the frame there. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's a shower there. It's so, a shower, the, the metal thing. Yeah. What I, what I didn't mention was on the gate was a no entry private property <laughs> sign. So full disclosure, I knew I shouldn't have been there. Anyway, so I raised my camera and I took a couple of frames, two or three frames. And as I did that, he turned around and then started shouting at me in Italian. So I turned around and went back out again. Um, okay. So l just as I took this shot was when I think he turned around because I actually think Karen, if I remember rightly, called out to me and said, will you come here? Will you get out of there? And then he turned around and, uh, and he, uh, yeah, he wasn't too happy about that. So, um, <laughs> yeah. But I always wonder what that bucket is for. <laughs> the bucket in the camper. I, I don't yes, like yes. to think about that too much. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just killed the picture for me. But sorry, anyway. <laughs> there you go. That's what I'm all about tonight, killing yeah, the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, moving on to number 10, Tony Ray Jones, uh, Glenn the Board Picnickers, take three. Mine is take two. Oh, you know? yes, sorry. <laughs> I remember these. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, I, mean, I wish. I, I wish that this was um, just a background of a field or something. Then, then I'd be happy. Look, um, I, I let, sorry, I'll leave you. To ask the question. Yeah, I find it. I find it. Uh, I mean, doesn't matter. Fields, no fields. Cars are just great here. You know, it's it's the whole setup. It's the whole background. The the the, the context of it. I mean. Of course, you could have pictured this anywhere else. Tony Ray Jones pictured it in in a in a in a, in a field with cows. Uh, this one is with cars in the background because they obviously yeah. obviously went to to watch some event and uh, decided to take a picnic with them. But I come on, this is not a picnic. I mean, this is the picnic. <laughs> this is, is the picnic. If yeah. you um, do, do you see this often? Uh, this kind yeah. of situations. I do because I go to this event every year and have done for the last four years. This is a uh, Henry Royal Regatta, um, okay. which is one of the sporting events in the world, um, oh. let alone this country. So I, I'm lucky that they give me press accreditation to go along uh, and take photographs here. And um, every single year, um, there is this car park outside the actual enclosure for the regatta event. Mm -hmm. where you see the parking spaces, every single parking space is booked by people in order to sit by their car and have picnics. Uh -huh. um, this is probably the least elaborate setup in that whole car park, this couple. Far more <laughs> okay. simple. Some this have marquees <laughs> built. They have long, no, long dining room tables with oh, candelabras God. along it. This is a huge, <laughs> huge thing. So what struck me is that these two look like they should be sitting along a huge dining room table with candelabras, but they're in this tiny little space uh -huh. with a very little table, uh, although they look very, very grand. Um, yeah. I, I kind of like that. But again, um, if, if, you, if, you, if this was a, a live image and you swivel Sorry. and you pivoted around 180 degrees, you would probably see 50 or 60 similar okay. scenes. <laughs> Um, okay, this was okay. one of hundreds that I took that day. Um, okay. But it was her look, her expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, although not necessarily welcoming, that, that actually for me, I, I, that's why I selected this picture out of probably about 200 that uh, I exposed that day. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It, it, I like the full surely, boot as well, the boot that's full of stuff. It surely, it surely is. Uh, for me, I've never seen a scene like this. I mean, it's not that I've never seen a picnic or people uh, eating out uh, like yeah. that, but the fact that you bring the the, the tablecloth, the the the, oh. the cutlery, the, the 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 plates, the glasses, everything matches. I mean, <laughs> this is like you brought your home dining set to yeah. outside. I mean, it's it's really amazing for me. I, I promise you, some people I think do. I really yeah. really think they do. They bring their entire dining running room with them. It's, it's quite something. <laughs> it's amazing to see. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Okay, so this was number <clears throat> 10, 11. Um, 
11? Yes. Uh, okay. Two gents sitting with uh, with the uh, ah. uh, with the lapel. Uh, Got it. Fly yes. and stuff. I mean, uh, it's another one that uh, I'm sure is very very British because uh, I don't know any other culture and I've traveled a bit around the world uh, that that would display such such scene i mean with the, the way they are dressing I, I, I mean what warrants this dress code <laughs> well tell I'll, I'll tell you this is um again another event because i primarily uh -huh. shoot events now I, I primarily target this sort of thing uh this took place in london um last summer uh -huh. and it's an event called the chaps olympiad and it is an event which parodies uh, and demonstrates a love affair with English, the English culture. Mm. And so in a way, it is there to exaggerate the dress, the way of life. Um, and so you will have people turning up dressed as fighter pilots, for example, English fighter pilots, <laughs> or people like this man who's about to go on a punt down the river in Oxford. Um, and so again, for me, it it is perfect to go to. And so this is just one of a number of characters um, who dressed like somebody from uh, Brideshead Revisited um, f for effect, in quite intentionally. Um, it's a celebration of, of, of the English, if you like. Hmm. And so for me, you can imagine, it was like a magnet. I, I had to get there. And um, yeah, this yeah. was one of, of number. I'm yeah, that's next year as well. Yeah. That's, that's what you do. You photograph the English so uh, that Kind of, an, yeah. an event about the English, <laughs> it would make sense. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, I've got to be there. This yeah. guy, this guy is is fantastic. I mean, the monocle. Uh, when yeah. was last time you saw a monocle? Did you ever see one outside of yeah. one of these things? I mean, not outside of that or the films. <laughs> no, 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 not in not in the not in the twenty first century or the twentieth century. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. And and the, the matching tie and yeah. and, and the, the tissue and the fly. Yeah. The, the fly. Jacket. I mean, the fly. Where, where did the fly come from? You know, it's yeah. it's really amazing. I, I really when I see him, it. I'm sure he'll be there next year. I'll ask him for you. I'll ask him. <laughs> yeah, if you see him, fulfill fulfill our 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 uh, uh, urge for uh, for uh, for knowledge. Uh, <laughs> okay, so number twelve. Uh, this is the last one. Okay. Um, uh, it's it's. A more technical question about this picture because I find the composition of this picture picture nothing short of brilliant. I mean, oh, everything is in place, everything is balanced, everything is where it should be. I don't think there is anything out of place in this picture. Uh, this is the one where uh, there is the, the stack of hay uh, or several uh, blocks of hay yeah, uh, yeah. packed, and there is some kind of game going on. So I suppose this is also at some event. <clears throat> of course, but yeah, it's, it's not really it's not really the the scene that is intriguing me. It's really about the composition. I mean, I find this picture like if you have to give an example of good composition, I would surely bring this one up and uh, show it well, to people. I mean, tell me about this picture. Then. What's well, your point? I mean, you're absolutely your right. View? This was this was at a small fete near where I live. Uh, again, one I go to every year, um, and um, yeah, this is um, I'll. I'll be very honest, I'm actually not very good at, at, at composing multiple subjects. Uh, my images tend to be very simple, single, double subject images. And so um, I'm not instinctively good at composition when it comes to more than two or three people in a frame. I, I approach this shot from, as you're looking at, from the right hand side. Uh, and as I walked around, um, it was one of these situations where I, for, for once, I could actually see the potential for a well-composed image. Um, and so I took a shot and I stepped again to my left and took another frame and stepped again to my left and took another frame. And as I took the third frame, um, the boy sort of coiled up uh, to, to throw the ball at the coconuts on the Shire. Um, and so I waited and then took another one as he threw it. Because um, I thought that would just make it a little bit more dynamic because everything else is really rather static in that frame. The guy mm. sitting down, the guy standing yeah, yeah. on the right, the couple on the chairs. So I thought a little bit of energy might have added to it. Yeah. Um, and so in a way, you know, perhaps I thought that through cunningly, but, but that was my intent. But it's one of these situations where this is not 
an image compositionally that comes naturally to me. I do, I do not have that vision that a lot of people have where they can see <clears throat> things appearing from around and be able to anticipate mm. movement. Um, I'm, I can't do that. I'm not very good at it. And so I, I, your comment's very flattering to me, but um, in a way I'm the, probably the last guy you should be <laughs> pointing to for instinctively good compositional skills. I don't have it, but if you want to use this as a masterclass, then um, feel free, well, uh, please. Yeah, I, That's I mean, great, this, yeah. One, this one came across uh, like that, so uh, I decided to bring it up from that perspective. No, I but, appreciate uh, anyway, uh, this was our last image, but uh, uh, I still have a last question, uh, which is not really a question. So your okay. instruction is all about subjects themselves, yes. not about yes. the composition, not about the juxtapositions, not about the colors, not about sure. any details in the image, uh, like hands or something that we have seen in, in our instructions uh, recently, for example. But about the subjects, what they are doing, yep. how they look. Uh, could you give some uh, advice for the, the, the people participating in the instruction? Uh, sure. What well, they should be looking for, how to do it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the advice that, that, the best advice I can give, um, because in a way I'm giving an instruction that matches the way that I photograph. Um, in a way, linked to what I was just saying in relation to that last image. I'm not naturally very good at uh, complex compositions. Um, but what I do try and do, um, and I hope sometimes I succeed, is capturing a very subtle moment occasionally. Um, not necessarily in a gesture, but perhaps just an expression. Or the circumstances in which a subject finds his or her or their selves. So it is not... Um, what is obviously being communicated, but something more subtle in the image than that. Something that you have to infer rather than have it rammed down your throat. Okay. And so I think really the purpose of my instruction is to try and get people um, to move away from something which grabs you by the throat and shakes you, which is often a wonderful thing, don't get me wrong, but to try and look for subtle nuances in their subjects and the surroundings. Um, and I'm not just talking about compositions, but the position in which a person finds his or herself can sometimes be quite telling. Um, it's a very difficult thing to get across, and it's something which I struggle to find <coughs> daily with my photography when I do go out to shoot. But it's one of those things that you kind of know it when you see it. Um, and I think it's hopefully going to be fun to carry out this, this um, instruction. Um, I certainly hope it is going to be fun. Um, but yes, I'd like people to think more about the people that they photograph rather than the, um, the light that hits them or how many different people can be crowded into a frame and arms and legs <laughs> flying around or, you know, reflections causing you to wonder whether you are seeing something when in fact you're not. It's less about um, trompe de l'oeil than actual reality and how reality can in and of itself be either amusing or emotional or, or sad or happy, any of those combinations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's my thinking behind it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so um, I think that's it. Uh, we have thank been you. talking for quite a while. I thought we would go quicker on that. Uh, I hope that oh. um, everyone will uh, watch it through through the end. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for your thank time, you for, Chris, for the yeah. interview, and for giving us uh, your instruction again. And uh, well, we'll be in touch. Okay? Absolutely, my pleasure. Yeah, it's good to well, talk to you and good to see you again. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Good bye luck bye. bye bye. I look forward to seeing the pictures very much. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure okay. you do. <laughs> take care now. Yeah, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye.